Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we are looking at London by William Blake. Now this is one of the poems which does appear in the Power and Conflict anthology. Now London is written by William Blake and just to provide you all with some context um, in terms of the poem, it was written by William Blake and published in 1794. And Blake again played a pivotal role at the time and is he was regarded at the time as a key member of the Romantics, an artistic and literary movement which was interested in human emotions and spirituality. Romantics were opposed to the establishment and felt that many people, particularly the poor, were oppressed and exploited by both the wealthy classes and recent scientific and industrial advances. Romantics believed in the power of the imagination and the idea that People could only be truly free if they were ruled by their creative and emotional impulses. And London, in simple terms, is a poem which takes a bleak view of the capital city. So we're just going to go over some keynotes for the poem. So as you know, London, sorry, if I write it here, which takes a bleak view of the capital city. So it does take a bleak view of the capital city. Um, at the time, there was a lot of poverty and it's seen through romantic eyes and it is a depressing, dangerous and cruel place. So London was a place where a lot of people at the time were struggling. Now, it is divided into four stanzas. OK, so it is divided into four stanzas and these are called Cotrains. And it follows an A, B, A, B rhyming scheme, okay? And this gives it a very simple rhythm which reflects its place as a song in Blake's collection. And the poem is structured so that the reader is touring the city with Blake, taking in the sights and sounds that he sees and hears as he wanders through the streets. In the first stanza, he mentions that he is close to the Thames, uh, which is the river, and there's a sense that he's mentoring with the river as he makes his observations. And in the first cut train, Blake is concerned with what he can see. But in the second cut train, he starts to describe what he can hear. So there's, to be honest, in the first and second stanza, there's a lot, there's lots of senses and sensory language to, to establish the mood, the feelings, the atmosphere. And it is the addition of this sensory element which gives the poem its impact as it progresses. And the third, uh, the third stanza uh, builds on this, okay, where Blake makes clear his contempt for the various institutions of power which have combined to create this city of corruption. Church, soldier and palace are used within the text, within the stanzas, which represent religion, the army and the monarchy, which have all oppressed the chimney sweeper. The, so a, a common quote here, which you can refer to here, is the chimney sweeper. So these were people who at the time were uh, struggling financially and they were going through a lot of hardships. So this is referring to the the common man at the time. And the the actual poem, it does end with some juxtaposition because we do have examples uh, of juxtaposition, uh, juxtaposition being used. Now, how 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 can you show this? This can be through the quote, marriage hearse. So that is used towards the end of the poem to show that. So there is juxtaposition being used here. So why is it used? It's used to show a contrast, okay? It, um, which, again, like I said, um, it's when you have a contrasting idea. So the poem does, in fact, end with juxtaposition of the marriage hearse, which is not only a comment on marriage, but also a comment on the city itself. And Blake's choice of last words is used as a vehicle used for transporting the dead and is summarising his views on the blighted city. Now, in terms of language, Blake's language throughout London is bleak. And what does he do to do that? You need to look at language through words and phrases, language techniques, etc., and his, his language is negative, it's bleak, and ultimately it's reflecting his attitude to the city. And again, qu quite simply, we've got certain techniques which you can look at. 
Uh, one technique you may want to look at is the use of repetition. Again, that falls under language, which is used by uh, the poet. So repetition is used frequently by Blake to hammer home his feelings. The repetition of chartered. So I'm just going to draw an arrow here. So you can look at the repetition of chartered and the significance of that. So chartered um, and then like that. Now, why is that used? What's the impact? So the repetition of chartered here, so as underlined here, it shows how he feels about the laws which have been imposed on the London. To give something a charter is to impose legal restrictions and ownership upon it. And there is a sense of irony here that the Thames, a natural body of water, has been made official and subjected to laws. This type of bureaucracy was something the Romantics disliked in intensely. Now, Blake then goes on to repeat Marx. Okay, so Marx is again something which is repeated. Now, this is repeated often by the poet, again, which is a playing with the meaning of the word. As a verb, he uses it to mean observe, but as a noun, it is an impression or disfigurement. This conveys the impression that the oppression of the city has physically impacted on its inhabitants. Their misery is etched into their faces. So here you may want to look at the double meaning behind that word. Another way which, uh, well, again, another way the writer uses repetition is through the quote every. So as highlighted here or circled. Now, every is used in the second and third stanza to show how widespread the city's corruption has become. While the word cry, okay, so cry is also significant here, so cry. Cry is repeated across these quatrains, cre creating an auditory landscape for the reader. This word is accompanied by many other descriptions of the sounds that can be heard. For example, sigh, curse and blast all add to the negative impression of the city. The combined effect is that the city is a type of hell filled with cries of misery. And these are some important areas for you to, for you to explore when analysing London. Have a go at answering the past paper question. Please subscribe, like and share for more education related videos. We are going to do the remaining poems for Power and Conflict. So please subscribe to stay up to date with our videos. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like and share for more.